Let me ask you a question. Have you ever been on a journey? Not just a physical one, but a mental one of the mind. And if so, what baggage did you take with you? And again, not just the physical baggage, but the mental baggage, the psychological baggage. Join me as we look at the work of Tom McFarland. My name is William R.B. Hayes, and this is an art talk. Good evening, this is an art talk. My name is William Harvey Hayes, and would you like to introduce yourself, please? I'm Tom Poole McFarland. And could you tell us a bit about your background, where you're from? Um, I'm from I'm from Las Cruces, New Mexico, but born in uh, San Antonio, Texas. And you're you're based in New York. Based in New York at the moment. My my art studio is in Brooklyn, uh, Bed Stuy. Yeah. Large photos in a long room. They are bright and optimistic, though stark. Plants, I think palm trees. Wide open space, clear blue skies, give a sense of expansiveness and openness, which contrasts with the room's confinement. The final photo is of a vehicle and a road intruding on nature. The stickers are like trophies of experience and domination of our environment. And looking at your um, exhibition, the first thing I looked at was a series of photographs of what for me looked like palm trees. Could you expand on that please? Love palm trees, but sadly they're not palm trees. Um, they're one of the first plants that I really recognized moving to the desert as as a huge icon because other than that every every other plant seems it's very small um, it's the one that really kind of like stands bold in the desert in New Mexico and each one is very unique they can grow in like the oddest places like in the video uh, there was at least 15 yuccas that just sprouted out through the parking lot and they're that part of the landscape. Yeah. And this thing that's sprouting out it's, it's through, through the um, parking lot, it's kind of like they're reclaiming nature. For me, that's one thing I would take from that. And in the middle of the, the photographs, there's a, um, for, the word Winnebago comes to mind, that's because of American TV I've seen or mobile home. Mm -hmm. What does that symbolize? Why do people take those? Um, I find majority of them tend to be like retired people who decide to like sell their house and just live and travel throughout the United States, picking up bumper stickers, um, uh, applying your time to the things that you couldn't do when you were working hard, having a solid career, I mean, ha like having your career. Yeah. I view an apparent wilderness, ice and snow, naked trees, some figures cross it, Civilization seems to be absent, but the artist is being filmed by a drone. Sparse grassland cut by a road, connecting modernity to nature. I experience wilderness, but it is vicarious and via the artist. Art and nature c combined as the artist journeys. I follow and wish to be inside the screen rather than external and separated from nature. The trikes leave and go off screen. I continue to view and experience the film, but I am not part of it. How much is this um, aspect, the aspects, the aspects of your personal life, your personal experiences coming, coming out there? For instance, well, that just, just by the fact you choose that landscape. I mean, a lot of the, the places that I chose to go back to to film I I would just go through my cell phone pictures yeah. and pick and choose like oh I want to go back there like this is a place to remember this is a, f a fun thing. Yeah, so, <laughs> so there's also a ge there's a geographical journey mm. and there's also in a sense a journey through life. The, when you were going through the through the um, like through the wilderness, we had your camera on a 
stand and that made me think of Jesus going through the desert or something in the wilderness. <laughs> a fancy Jesus. Well, no, well yeah, well, well, you know, with some interesting equipment to, to you know, to uh, take selfies of the 40 days, you know. Uh -huh. But, you know, so it's, but also it, it, because it's the, the landscape being something very interesting mm -hmm. and the landscape almost being a piece of art. And I was thinking you can't have too many people walking around on it. it yeah. It could damage it. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. And after seeing the sandy part, then there was a very sparse grassland. But that seemed um, almost um, like succulent to me because contrasting it with the, the stone mm -hmm. area. Yeah, and actually those are not too far away from each other oh. also. Just because the Utah's landscape, you can drive an hour and you'll be in a completely, go from mountains to desert to the grassy fields. Okay. And is, is that something that means a lot to you personally, like inside you, this nature, put that part of the landscape and nature? Yes, I mean, I would say so. I mean, in New York, when it rains, I'm expecting like a, a very nice smell ah, from like the right. happy plants. And yeah, uh, yeah. I get a happy, <laughs> not that smell, but... <laughs> but well, well you, maybe Central Park could get some plants. Yeah. A journey of the mind stimulated by an external structure walking towards a frame, a web, a net. But I find snow and ice. The frame gives the random weaving a structure to hang, moated layered as I look through it. I walk around the construction. It appears to be in motion, with snow and ice falling and floating in front of me, changing and living. A journey depends on our starting point, as well as our destination. It could be a trap waiting to fall down on us. Do we bring optimism or fear? It invites me in. Dare I enter? Or will my fears stop me? No, I bend down and go through the small door. Now surrounded by ice and snow, my mind gives motion to the coming storm. Ice and snow should be cold, but I find warmth as the light is reflected back to me. I am in the snowfall, part of my own imagination. The storm speeds up, whirling around me, a duality of fear and possible danger in the web, or the thrill of snow, refreshing and cold. Yet there is risk in the building storm, whirling, whirling, will it stop? Can I survive this? Having come through the danger, I leave in peace and tranquility. So coming to the final thing, there's an installation or the, the suspended string sculpture, which also, comes, like you said before to me, links to your paintings. Like I, I looked around that and it made me think of a snowstorm. Also, it, it was quite interesting to look through it because then you got several layers together and that gave me a different effect with the lighting. Yeah, uh, all my paintings really interact with the wall and then the painting and the viewer and then the lighting. Yeah. Just because of its three-dimensional um, sculptural aspect. Uh, yeah, that's... And so it, wherever you move, everything is always changing. Yeah. And then that, that is super different with the photographs, which the photographs are a super new practice in, in my work, which... Okay. Yeah. And of course, a, a photograph is very static. Mm -hmm. e e even if in the picture there can still be motion, it's still static. Yeah. Going inside it, which was interesting, because some people look at this and they don't know they have permission to go inside for the door and look around. That was also gave a totally different um, perspective to it for me. Oh, uh, completely. And I mean, this is the f this is the first one that I've ever done where people can actually kind of travel inside the painting and look out of it instead yeah. of always being looking in. And and. I got something different from the inside. I got more from the outside because you had several several layers to look at at the same time. Yeah. Okay, that's that's interesting. Well, thank you very much for your time. Oh yeah. You know, and, uh, it's a, yeah. Nice speaking to you. Nice speaking with you too. And I look forward to seeing some of your work in the future. Oh, definitely. Yeah. 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 We have experienced the paintings of, and the art of Tom McFarlane. What is your experience of it? It was a journey. More importantly, make your own journey experience it yourself. This has been an art talk by William Harvey Hayes and I say goodbye. <laughs>